Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the immaculate heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your sacred heart in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins, for the intentions of all my relatives and friends, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. Let us pray for the intentions of the Holy Father for the month of June, for migrants fleeing their homes. We pray that migrants fleeing from war or hunger, forced to undertake journeys full of danger and violence, find welcome and new opportunities in the countries that receive them. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, as we enter in the presence of the Lord, as we begin this new day, let us take a few moments to thank the Lord for all that He has done for us. We see that right from the time of our birth till now, there have been many instances or events where the Lord has worked wonders in our lives. He has guided us, He has protected us, He has shown us the way, helped us to overcome challenges and difficulties. And in this way, we can identify Him guiding us all through our lives. But there are occasions wherein we find it difficult to recognize His presence among us. We find it difficult to identify the blessings and the graces. And here we see that it is in these occasions that we need to especially ask the Lord to give us the grace that we may be able to identify those graces, those blessings in our lives. And therefore we see that the first thing to do is to be grateful to the Lord for all that He has done. And therefore as we begin today's morning prayer, let us begin on this note of gratitude. Let us ask the Lord to help us identify His presence in our lives. And therefore, let us begin by thanking the Lord for all the things that He has done for us. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for giving us talents, opportunities and various gifts that enable us to become better persons and also that enable us to reach out to others and make a difference in the lives of others. Lord, we also want to thank you for the gift of our family members, friends, relatives, near and dear ones, and all those who play a very important role in our lives. We see that it is these people 
who have been instrumental in making us who we are. They are the ones who have devoted their time, energy and effort. And as a result of it, they have molded us and they have made us better individuals. So today, Lord, in a very special way, we ask you to bless all their endeavors and give them all the graces that they may require in life. We also thank you, Lord, for giving us the gift of this day. A day that would help us in many ways to appreciate the good things that you have done for us. A day wherein we may complete some thing that was left behind. Or a day that may present to us various challenges. Whatever be the situation, Lord, we ask you to be with us and guide us. Allow us to be led by you. Lord, we also thank you for the opportunities, for the experiences that you have given us in life. There have been many experiences wherein we have enjoyed and these are the experiences that we want to cherish in life. But this, at the same time, there have also been those experiences and those moments wherein we have found it difficult to accept them. These are the experiences that have been learning experiences. They have taught us a lot in life. Though they may have been hard, bitter, but still they have given us a valuable lesson. They have made us stronger. And therefore, Lord, we also thank you for those moments which have helped us to become strong, which have helped us to become better individuals. And Lord, we also thank you for giving us opportunities to reach out to others, to make use of our talents. And thus, Lord, we ask you to be with us, guide us throughout this day. Lord, allow us to be led by you, so that whatever we do, our actions, our words, may reflect your love, joy and mercy to the world around us. Help us to become your instruments, so that you may work in and through us. And therefore now, my dear friends, let us all close our eyes at this moment and let us praise the Lord that he has woken us up in this morning. We thank him for the good health that he has given us, for the good night's rest. We thank him for keeping us safe and sound, for protecting us from all danger, from all harm. He has kept us in his love. And at every moment we see that his gaze is upon us. He never abandons us. He is always there, guiding us, protecting us, showing us the right path. He loves us. And for all this, let us praise him. Let us thank him and let us glorify him. Lord, as we offer you this day, we ask you that you be with us. Help us to make the right decisions. Help us to do the right things so that we too may become worthy instruments, that we may be worthy workers in your vineyard. And therefore, my dear friends, let this day be a day of joy and blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And today, in a very special way, we shall reflect on Psalm 62. As usual, we shall have a general overview of the psalm and then we shall take a look at some of the important verses in detail. Now, we see that Psalm 62 is a psalm of trust and once again, it is attributed to David. It emphasizes the importance of finding true rest and security in God alone. Now, the psalm can basically be divided into four main sections. Now, the first section includes verses 1 and 2. And this is a declaration of confidence in God. In the second section, which spans from verses 3 to 4, we see a critique of human power and trust in worldly things. So basically what happens when we place our trust in the things of the world? So here we see that the psalm tends to critique this attitude of humans. 
The third section is a reaffirmation of trust in God's steadfast love and this we will find in verses 5 to 8. And finally in verses 9 to 12 we have a final exhortation to put our trust in God and God alone. And therefore overall when we take a look at the psalm we can definitely say that this psalm 62 presents a powerful message of trust and confidence in God. It challenges the reliance on human power and worldly possessions and therefore it points to God as the ultimate and the true source of salvation, strength and security. And therefore the psalm will encourage us to do something that is right. The psalm encourages a posture of waiting silently for God, pouring off one's heart before him and finding refuge in his presence. And therefore it also serves as a reminder to ultimately put our whole trust and faith in God and God alone and God will take care of the rest. And now let us go into the detail of the psalm. Now verses 1 to 2 goes like this. Truly my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. And here we see that David begins by expressing his unwavering confidence in God. He declares that his soul silently waits for God and he recognizes that true salvation comes from God and God alone. And therefore we see that David will acknowledge God as his rock, his salvation and his defense. And thus we see that David affirms that God will help him. And because of this, David will not be shaken up or be distressed by any external circumstances or he will not be affected by the things of the world. In verses 3 to 4, it goes like this. How long will you attack a man? You shall be slain, all of you, like a leaning wall and a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his high position. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouths, but they curse inwardly. And in this second section, we see that David criticizes those who rely entirely on human power and those who place their trust and faith in worldly things. And therefore, he addresses his enemies and he exposes their deceitful intentions and actions. In this way, we see that David points out their hypocrisy and he warns them of the impending destruction if they continue on the same path. And we see that he uses quite a powerful imagery comparing them to a leaning wall and a tottering fence, something that will eventually come crashing down. Now in verses 5 to 8 go like this. My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved because in God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Once again, we see that the image of the rock is quite strong here for David. Rock as a shelter, rock as something that will protect, that will preserve from harm. And therefore, we see that David reaffirms his trust in God's steadfast love and faithfulness. And therefore, he encourages himself and others to wait silently for God alone, recognizing the true salvation, glory and strength come from God alone. And therefore David calls for complete trust in God at all times, emphasizing the importance of pouring out one's heart before God, telling God everything whatever is happening within us. And then in the final section, verses 9 to 12 go like this, Surely men of low degree are a vapor, 
men of high degree are a lie. If they are weighed on scales, they are altogether lighter than vapor. Do not trust in oppression, nor vainly hope in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. God has spoken once, hence twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God. And here we see that in this final section, David will exhort his people to put their trust in God alone, rather than in human power and wealth. And therefore he highlights the fleeting nature of human accomplishments and the importance of setting one's heart on worldly things. And therefore here we see that we need to place our faith and trust in God and God alone. David affirms that true power belongs to God and emphasizes his attribute of mercy. And we see that David concludes by emphasizing the just judgment of God, that God will reward each one according to his work. And therefore, my dear friends, as we reflect on this psalm, let us look at a verse or a thought that would have probably touched us or inspired us. Let us remain with this thought, with this word. Allow it to take root in you. And as we spend a few moments in silence, let this psalm become part of you, so that whatever actions and words that you may speak, all may reflect the peace, joy and mercy of God. Prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of of the heavenly host by the power of God thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of Adoration O Sacrament Most Holy O Sacrament Divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude Prayer for Souls in Purgatory Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God Rest in peace. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen